Hey there, boys and girls. It's your old podcast pal, Ralph, here. Why don't you check out The Ralph Report? That's my daily show, Monday through Friday. You can get an earful of me, and we have a pretty good time. Plus, if you're a Hollywood Babylon fan and you subscribe at the three- or four-star general levels, you can get the entire back catalog of Hollywood Babylon, the past decade of Babylons, for you to listen to at your leisure. Plus, the four-star tier, they get to watch us record the show live once a week. Plus, there's uh, live stream events, all kinds of goodies. Why don't you go check it out? Go over there at Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the Ralph Report. That's P A T R E O N dot com slash the Ralph Report. Or check us out at the Ralph Report.com. It's time to babble the fuck on. It's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. It is Saturday. 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 Night. Yeah, Saturday. In Bur- I fucking totally lost time. Someone it get is- him a calendar. Well, I did go crazy. It that's is Saturday true. night in Burbank, ladies and gentlemen. So oh, let's babble better. the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garner. Hey! What a lovely room of people. I know. Thanks for coming out, kids. Um, are they all really here? I don't know if you read this or not, but I went crazy. I heard, yeah. How's your brain? Everything's fine. <laughs> Uh, everything it, fucking. It's focuses. okay to laugh, folks. It's all right. I got. I sense some tension in the crowd. Don't laugh. It'll trigger me. He's he's crazy. Um, that wasn't as bad as just recently. There's no way to start a comedy show, but I lost. Get it all out. Yeah, let get me it all out at the top. Therapy right up top. I lost my beloved wiener dog of 18 years, Shecky. Pour one out for Shecky. Um, fucking. I am more sad than if I lost my actual fucking wiener. To be honest with you. <laughs> That could fucking go, but yeah. this dog was everything. You knew this dog. I knew Shecky well. Dr. Josh Roush knew this dog. and some My people... co-star. That's right. You fucking worked with... You had a scene with Shecky. I did. In Fuck. Yoga Hosers, yeah. Uh, but 18 years. And the vet, I saw the, the vet later on, and the, 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 I wasn't here when she passed. I was away. And she did literally die in her sleep. I'm telling you, this dog never showed any age aging whatsoever. She was plucky as fuck, just running up and, and down and shit like that. She had the sugar snout because she was older. She was 18. And then uh, she went to uh, bed. My, my wife went to bed. She always slept on the bed with us and stuff. And Jen said she got up at like 4.30 in the morning. She's like, something smelled. And Checky was just gone. All her fluids were leaking out of her mm. and stuff like that. I know apparently that's what happens. Yeah. Grim fucking death. And she's like, you wouldn't have wanted to be here. I was like, I would have. I would have fucking lapped up those fucking oh, fluids. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. I got a <laughs> palate cleanser there. But I'll be honest with you, man. I was like, it was just, it was, a, I was a little... It was, I was a little suspicious because I was like, what do you mean she just went in her fucking sleep? Oh, you think your wife murdered your dog? <laughs> I'm not saying she murdered the dog, but she also got like two German shepherds. She went to get like a fucking German shepherd puppy. And then they, they were like, oh, by the way, her mother's still here. And they brought the fucking mom out. And so Jen got both of those dogs. So yeah. Shecky was competing with two other big year German bitches. And right. She, <laughs> so for a second, I was like, what if fucking some foul play happened? And so yeah. I saw, I, you know, I fucking put that away. But then I saw the vet like last week. So I took those other dogs into the vet. And uh, have them check their stool for Shecky. <laughs> yeah. I was like, fuck, you see anything in there? <laughs> The vet was just, I was like, was there any, I said, not for, I said, come here, come here. <laughs> Anything suspicious about this death? Like right, he was Quincy. <laughs> I was going to say, like it was Jack Klugman and shit. <laughs> Natural causes, I don't buy it. <laughs> Sam, give me the autopsy. He said, um, he goes, Kevin, 14 years with a dog is a gift. You had 18 fucking years. Yeah. He's going like, some people just die of old age. I was like, she wasn't a person. <laughs> Uh, so yes, uh, the one thing that she left me with, aside from like 18 years of pure joy, uh, was the you know the most important lesson we the living should always remember: memento mori. Remember, you must die mm-hmm. one day. It fucking ends, and it could end without planning. You know what I'm saying? Like I had my other dogs; they wound down over the course of like three years. You saw it coming. Yeah. Oh god, I used to like for all 
Four of them. For Mulder and Scully, we loved the X-Files. Um, for uh, Louie, for Marty, like I became their back legs for a year before ever the front legs went out. And then they just became fucking pissing, pooping furniture and shit. Yeah. But I kept them alive as long as I could. Like as long as they would wag their tails and want to eat, I was like, fuck it, man. And everyone else in the family, a bunch of fucking mercenaries, man. <laughs> Like fucking Jen, her parents, they were always like, you gotta let them go. I was like, fuck you. And I kept them alive and shit until the dogs were like, kill me, kill me. So I had years to get ready, you know, for the fucking end. But with Shecky, it just went like that. But it's a powerful reminder that that sometimes that's how life ends. So that it'd be based on that, since Ralph is so old, I've been looking in after him. Yeah. Cause I hope never that's how I go, is quick in my sleep. I with don't want my you... wife in bed? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Just shit. She's like, I don't know shit. Like, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning. Shit was leaking out of Ralph. I was like, as in life, so yes, in death. Yes. It was earlier in the evening, too. <laughs> Do you not know how sex works? Do I have to have a conversation with all of you? Uh, when a man and woman really like each other. <laughs> they let a dog die in bed with them. <laughs> Uh, no, so I don't want you like carrying my back legs when I'm, you know, going. I'm I don't doing want you. it. <laughs> no, I don't I, want I will that. whip no. out my magic walking scarf and walk you around. Yeah, like I, I used to walk the. Don't want dog. you behind me at any time in my life, <laughs> let alone you when say I'm that, powerless. Fuck you. You say that now, but if like you are death's door and they were like, it's either death or he walks behind you, mm. you'd fucking be like, take walk behind me, motherfucker. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> fuck you to life. That's what it would be. Uh, raise a glass for my poor dead little big eared German bitch, ladies and gentlemen. Shecky, Shecky we miss you. Slancha, uh, is that what they say? Slancha, as they say in the old Slancha. country, yes. How are you? Any animals die? No, no. <laughs> Reggie's gonna live forever, I know that, so. Oh my god, your doctrine's still alive? Oh yeah. That nervous wreck? Yeah, it would. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna live forever just to spite me. <laughs> I guess I'll live forever just because he's suspicious of everybody. <laughs> yes. Anytime I've ever been to Ralph's place, you walk in, that dog's like... <laughs> yeah, he, he looks that way at me. And I'm the one who feeds him. What was the story? He was like, you got him... He was, he was flown to you and he shit all over himself? Yeah, or this poor animal. <laughs> My ex bought him from a breeder in, like, Missouri or some shit. And so they're like, okay, we'll get him out to you just, uh, just in, in a couple days. And they uh, packed him up in a crate and put him on a plane and shipped him from Missouri to LAX in a plane as a puppy. Right. And by himself? By himself. <laughs> Ripped from your mother's fucking teeth, yeah. thrown in a box. Not in the first, first class section either, by the way. <laughs> no. And uh, when he arrived, he had obviously gone uh, all over himself, and he was uh, mortified and traumatized. And I was like, no wonder the fucking animal's a best case. If you took a baby and put him in a box and mailed him to Los Angeles, they probably wouldn't turn out to be the best adjusted kid. Isn't that how you got here? That is exactly how I got here, yeah. Philadelphia, I... somebody threw you in a box. Go be on radio. <laughs> Punched some holes and <laughs> stamped me up. Yeah, but uh, he's, he's a mess, so... Sometimes only the good dog. Raise a glass for Ralph's living dog. Yeah. <laughs> Slange or whatever. Um, I'll tell you right now, though, Chucky's going to miss out on the fact that fucking we are one month maybe away from uh, the Flash movie. I know. And we all know what a huge Flash fan Shecky was. Yeah. <laughs> What Couldn't a poor segue that was, by totally, the way. Totally, thanks That's very much. Yeah. Uh, Shecky had some issues with Ezra Miller, but she loved <laughs> The Flash. <laughs> Um, fucking well, every, every, I, I surf YouTube every day looking for like just one second of new footage of Michael. K I mean, let's be honest. I'm going to see Batman colon the flash. Also. I think we all are. That's yeah. the attraction for most I of us. I can't fucking right? wait, man. I know some people have seen it already. And then I also saw on fucking Twitter, like a bunch of people have seen it. Like they gave Stephen King a fucking I screening. saw that too. Yeah. Noted superhero enthusiast, Stephen King. <laughs> Uh, fucking the Russo brothers, that makes sense. Yeah. But what about fucking the guy who made Clerks once? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm always talking about this. I'm always blowing Batman with two hands and they can't fucking give me an early screening. It fucking sucks. <laughs> Make a call. You know people. I bet they'll... No, I don't want to beg. Oh, you want to be ass? Desperate. Yes. I want to go to the prom and I want somebody to ask me. I wouldn't know which Warner brother to call. <laughs> Yakko. 
He's the one. <laughs> He's the one who handles all the inputs. <laughs> wow, Animaniacs fans. I know, tonight. fuck. <laughs> Be dropping fucking references all night. Um, what are the other ones' names? Uh, Wacko, Yakko, and Dot, the Warner Dot, sister. Yeah. All right. Good, 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 good talk. Good talk. The other two didn't get applause, man. They're like, no, fuck no, Dot. No, fuck Dot. <laughs> fucking Warner, woke bitch. Warner sister. <laughs> Somebody on Twitter today, uh, just tonight, this evening, while I was sitting there watching Veep for the zillionth fucking time, um, I was uh, going through Twitter and somebody was like, fucking Kevin Smith used to be funny until his shit got all woke. And so I, I wrote back, I was like, well, to be fair, Chasing Amy was 1997 and Dogma was 1999 and they are, but to use your terminology, pretty woke. Yeah. And then uh, they defended that by being like, yeah, well, fucking after you got attacked by the crowd, you went soft. And then I was like, okay, the very next movie I made was Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which had one of the highest fuck counts of all time. <laughs> and Glad went after the movie. And then the person wrote, this is beneath us on a Saturday night. <laughs> Red, I'm out of examples. Exactly. But you know what? He's right. It was beneath us on a Saturday night. <laughs> you did make a movie about a man who transitioned into a walrus, though, when you think about it. So, True. you Good know. Point. My bad. You were trans before it was hip. So you know what fucking. <laughs> You're going to get us canceled. <laughs> You're in trouble because I got nothing to cancel, but you actually have a career. <laughs> I got nothing to lose. Uh, before we jump into uh, our shout-outs, I want to thank our friends at Manscaped.com for being our sponsor again this evening. Or Womanscaped. Yes, I'm sorry. I don't mean to mansplainscape you. <laughs> uh, Manscaped.com, uh, they are our sponsor tonight. Keep in mind, boys and girls, Father's Day is less than a month away, so if you're looking for a great gift for dad... If you're looking to shave your dad's pubes, <laughs> then Manscaped well, is, is the way to go. What better gift... To give to, shave to dad your dad's pubes. than to take care of where you came from. When you think about it, you're taking care of the source of where you first came from. Yeah, but for him? No, no don't do it for like, him. Whip it out, dad. <laughs> no, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you give him the supplies and the equipment to take care of himself. What kind of gift is that? Do it yourself. <laughs> it's better than shaving my dad's balls. <laughs> good point, good point. And my dad's dead. It'd be even creepier. <laughs> Exhume that fucking corpse. Nyang, nyang, nyang. I love you, Dad. Get your dad the ultimate gift, the Performance Package 4.0. You get the Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer. Keep Dad looking good for Mom. Or his boyfriend. I'm not judgy. I don't care who Dad sleeps with. Uh, the Weed Whacker 2.0. We both love the Weed Whacker. This is going to make me cry because it's just I'm realizing I'll never be able to shave my wiener again. Yeah, I think so. You mean your dog. You're talking about your dog. Yeah, that yeah. too. Uh, the crop preserver ball deodorant. Yeah, In case man. dad's balls are smelly, you want to drop a subtle hint? You ever, ever had that complaint ever? Uh, my balls are smelly? Because yeah. mm. I know you've got gigantic testes. I do have giant, voluminous, dangling testes. Yes. So one would imagine they Don't would get... applaud. It's not, yeah, it's not good for anyone. Are you hooting and hollering for giant yeah. balls? You say it now, but if you ever had to encounter them, you'd be like, yeah. ew, yeah. put them away. If you've ever sat on your own balls, you'll know there's nothing <laughs> joyous about that ownership. <laughs> Uh, but no one, uh, thankfully, I, I assume I've only been with kind people who wouldn't tell me if I did, but no one has ever said, whew, hold up, Junior, why don't you go get some deodorant on those balls before we go any further? Would you appreciate that kind of honesty? I would not. <laughs> Keep it to yourself if my balls smell, that's my motto. <laughs> and the Crop Reviver Toner for your balls, too, toner. I could use some toner, I need some lift. Oh, that, I thought it was about shading it or something to make it look larger. No, I'm not contouring it with makeup. <laughs> it's the word on you, man. Chicks are like, he contours his fucking dick. Yeah. Sucking the cheekbones of my penis. <laughs> Uh, the boxer briefs also included in this, plus a travel bag. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit, also for fathers around the world. You get the, the Beard Hedger Trimmer, Beard Shampoo and Conditioners, Beard Oil, Beard Balm, 
and a signature beard comb and scissors. They realize at a certain point, they're like, you know, we should probably move north, not just do the balls and stuff. We can The whole body. The, yeah. Manscaped has you covered. They even have uh, boxers uh, as well. So go check out manscaped.com. 20% off plus free shipping. If you use the code BABBLE at checkout, that's 20% off. And free shipping at manscaped.com if you use the phrase babble. Go babble your balls, kids. Indeed. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. All right. How much should we make doing an ad like that? Uh, I'm not the man to ask. I just follow it. I just follow orders. Fucking Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> You're worried about getting canceled? You know, Will, our guy Will, he calls me up. He says, oh, we got to buy. Uh, Manscaped wants to advertise on uh, Hollywood Babylon. I'm like, great. He goes, read this. I'm like, okay. I'm not, I don't ask questions. I was, I did uh, Burt Kreischer's podcast, uh, two, two Bears, One Cave. Usually it's him and Tom Segura, but Tom wasn't there, so it was just me and Burt. Right. And uh, he was talking about ads, and he fucking, he, he was quoting prices for ads where I'm like, they give you how much? And I was like, I gotta ask Ralph how much we make and fucking fat lot of good that did. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a, a worker bee, sir. I'm not, a, I'm not the head of the hive. Fair enough. So, <laughs> you, you can pay me not to do the ads if you want, and then uh, I'll be Everyone fine. Everyone just with saw it. backstage for a second. They're like, he's got no power. I have none. No, <laughs> he's I'm, a cog. I'm a puppet, <laughs> or a muppet. Hey, speaking of Muppets, man, did you see my fucking uh, Muppet debut? No. You haven't watched I it? I have not seen it yet. Episode but I'm going seven to. of, uh, of uh, uh, Mayhem. Uh, Mayhem, uh, Muppets Mayhem, yes. Uh, a lot of me in it. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. You know, I'm a big fan. It's, uh, it was fun. It's a fun show. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's talk to some folks out here tonight who have come particularly long distances or are celebrating special occasions with us here this evening. We call this segment the Shout Outs. It's a shout out. Kevin and Brown, so get your cock out. Yeah. Get your cock out. Dental work. Yeah, really. Hit the back of one of them molars. I don't know sure. if we have a dental plan on this show either. Don't ask me that. So, uh, Is uh, Jenny here, Zombie Jen? Where are you, Zombie Jen? Long time uh, supporter of the show. Great to see you again, oh, Jen. Oh, see Zombie so Jen in the parking lot. Yes, she is. She has been with us since the very beginning. And she's here tonight celebrating her birthday. So I just wanted to give her a special oh, shout Oh, happy birthday. She lives in Lake Forest, which is down there in Orange County-ish area. Is that? Wait, it's is that it's it? like a 90-minute drive. I got she... two bucks for you, Jen. <laughs> I put it in a car. Come on up and get it. I put it in a card, but I didn't bring a card. It's all the money I have on me. Two dollars? I, I thought we'd get money for the ad and shit. <laughs> Don't make out with other people in the audience. It's her birthday. She can do whatever uh, she I wants. I suppose so, yeah. Get yourself a very inexpensive yeah, drink. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, Jen outfit. works at the Ren Fair. Oh my God. I thought you were just costume. a gypsy hustling people outside the comedy club. <laughs> can you say gypsy anymore or is that canceled? No, you can't say that. I, I, I thought you were a dirty Romanian working outside the, <laughs> outside the club. I don't know. What do we call him? A traveler. A traveler. A traveler. Okay. Dirty Romanian. So, Kevin, if I got this at the fair, what I would say is, Huzzah to the give who give me not one, but two for my big, brown, luscious eyes. Shut up for <laughs> Zombie Jen, man. Happy Thank birthday. you, Jen. Happy birthday. Jen, by the way, adds all she really wants for her birthday is to be in a Kevin Smith film someday. Oh my God, so. that's so easy. Can you make that happen for her? All you have her? to do is be around me when it's happening. Some people ask all the time, like, how do I get in your movie? I was like, just be there when it's happening because I'm a proximity guy. I'm like, you, get in the fucking movie. Yeah. She belly dances? She belly dances and she's amazing. I've never had a belly dancer in a movie, so fucking... It's about time. Yeah, right? Yeah. Done and done. All right. That's why I stay so close to Kevin, just in case he makes a movie. She'll, he'll point at me and... Uh, I'm like, you, get yeah. in this movie and say nothing. Say nothing. Just, to, just I'll give you 20 seconds of screen time. Go. <laughs> Hold my dog. Yes. Oh. Hold on, I'll make it funnier. Hold my wiener. There we go. That's better. 
Uh, Michael from Brisbane, Australia. Michael, are you here? Hey, Michael. Welcome. Right up front. Longtime listener, attending the show on May 20th, flying over from Brisbane, hoping to make it on the shout-out list. Well, Michael, thank you so much for being here. It's not just for the show, though. You're here for another reason, I hope, right? A couple other reasons. What else are you doing while you're... He's hoping to get two bucks. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Zombie Jen. <laughs> you gotta start carrying singles like you're at a strip club. I know, when you really. Come to this show. Make it rain. <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, Jesse Chavez. Right ah! Right up front. Jesus Christ. <laughs> how do you get? Do you get here early to get up? Yeah. Front? How do you get front row seats? <laughs> you know a guy, Dan Dan Ruiz. Dad's always up front too. How do you get up front? You come here early? early yeah. yeah, you got you got to see somebody about that. <laughs> Dan is in the front row every show we do, which I love. So am I. That's true. <laughs> Jesse writes, my name is Jesse. I'm a four-star general in the Garmy. Thank you so much, sir. I'm a member of the Kevin Smith Club. Jeez. Why, thank you. I'll be in attendance with my lovely... Not as many applause for that, I noticed. <laughs> I'll be in attendance with my lovely girlfriend, Kathy... You must be Kathy. Yes. You are lovely. I wrote an email back last year, and I figured you probably didn't read it. Oh, I did. I just ignored it. Um, <laughs> not everybody gets in. I'm the velvet rope of the, Ralph, of the uh, Hollywood Babylon show. And you probably won't read this one. Ha! <laughs> Suck it! But in case you do, I wanted you to thank Dan Ruiz for being a friend that we see every time we come to Babylon. Aww. Kevin might remember he's from Riverside, and that's where Kevin had his first experience with Central Air. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> literally just going to say, Riverside? Yeah. That's where I experienced my first Central Air. So this is a bromance that was born here at the Hollywood Babylon show. He found you on Twitter. And, yeah. Found you on Grindr. Let's be honest. <laughs> found you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> In honor of Dan, can you have Batman himself, Mr. Adam West, sing They're Coming to Take Me Away with Love, Jesse Chavez? Well, if I, I don't usually do Adam West, but if I, if, I, if I have to. Can I get a little music there, Josh? Remember when you ran away and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I go berserk? Well... You left me anyhow, and then the days got worse and worse, and now you see I've gone completely out of my mind. And they're coming to take me away, ha ha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho, he he, ha ha, to the funny farm, where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha, There you go. Going out to you guys. I gotta give you fucking major props uh, for your finger work. Whenever you do Adam West, it's he see, always had that yeah. that that hand gesture. But you hear from all the girls like big props on your finger work. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but you always it really sells it. I think like so. you sound like it, but still when you do this, I'm like that is fucking yeah. the guy. Is that the secret to the impression? I think it is. You have to Every embody. Person? You have to embody. All right, so do do, uh, do uh, Schwarzenegger. Let's see your finger work on Schwarzenegger. Ah! Schwarzenegger is more mouth work. Ah! It's more. It's more teeth. Ah! Well, yeah, that's hot. It's incredibly hot. Yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, because all the things you know he's doing, and yeah, you know, you fill in, uh, you know, a pothole, and you don't even know it's not a pothole. It's like people working. Ha! Ah! That's hilarious, isn't it? I ride bikes. <laughs> That's this Arnold, is, there's man. a uh, fucking... It's like a master class in this? Should I make some money on this? There's a strike going on. This is the only work <laughs> I've got. Only, only directing I'll be able to do. Um, Jonathan Gonzalez, are you... Uh, hey, Jonathan, how are you? JG. Been a fan of the podcast since day one. First time seeing you guys live since the John Lovitz Comedy Club. Wow. 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 Look at the fucking Look at shirt. that old school shirt. That was wow. one of our first shirts. Keep calm and babble on. Look at that. God, You're not you... proud enough to wear it, but you brought it in your purse. So. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever, whatever. It's a fine. I used to really enjoy... I mean, I love doing the show whenever we do it, but I remember that was the early heydays of the show where first we started at Smod Castle with like 48-seater and shit. Then yeah. we moved up to the Lovitz. And going to City Walk on a Friday night or a Saturday night was like... To me, I was like, I've made it. 
Because we're working where you could buy a fucking Cinnabon. That's right. <laughs> you can leave this show and go bowl. <laughs> yes. I'm an asshole. Thank you. More I'm hand work right of, there. I'm, I'm kind of an asshole. <laughs> what's the, what, what, what's uh, Al Pacino? Is there any hand work there? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Got to slap something. That's, that's Pacino. Funny you should ask. Why? Because Jonathan says, uh, at this point of the night, the edibles we've ingested have most likely kicked in. <laughs> yeah, I'll make this show very funny. Yeah. I'm we, sure that fucking dead dog talk really harshed your buzz. <laughs> we are high, so Kevin doesn't have to be. Well, how nice for you guys to make that. That's true. On Tuesday, it'll be 17 weeks. Wow. Weed free. <laughs> Don't applaud that. <laughs> I do have a plan. Uh, 15 years, uh, first 15 years of my career, I, I didn't smoke weed, which right. is weird because of all the Jane Silent Bob movies. Second 15 years of my career, I did smoke weed. This next 15, not going to smoke weed. Coke? But Coke? When I'm, yeah, all yeah. fucking <laughs> doing rails like crazy. I recommend But when it. I turn 67, yeah. back to weed. Oh, really? Yeah, and not then ride it to the grave. Not going to jump to a horse or something, just like pick a new drug? Maybe there'll be something space age and futuristic <laughs> at that point. Right. That'll be like, you know how they have edibles now? You plug your brain into some coaxial cable or something. Well, that sounds dangerous. No, it <laughs> Uh, we're having also multiple cocktails in your honor, Ralph. Well, thank you so much. I recommend that highly. Uh, speaking of Al Pacino, to celebrate seeing you guys alive again after so long, I'd love to be serenaded by Al Pacino singing Never Gonna Give You Up. <laughs> this, is, this is new. This is a first. So don't judge me. This is a new experiment. We'll have to You're wait You're going to rickroll with Pacino? I'm going to rickroll. I'm going to owl-roll, if you owl will. <laughs> Give me a little music there, Josh. Time to boogie. <laughs> Ooh, wow. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. A full commitment's what I'm dreaming of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I want to tell you how I'm feeling. I gotta make you understand. Never gonna give you up. <laughs> Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around, desert you. Never gonna make you cry. <laughs> Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie and fucking hurt you. There you go, that's it. Oh, shit. Well, I've got the camera out, we've got a show in Jersey in two weeks. Yeah, we do. Can we do a quick ad? Yeah, Can you sure. guys sit through a quick ad? Yeah, sure. Um, so, say, uh, New Jersey, man, we're coming to Spot Castle to do Battle on. Really? That's the line? <laughs> There's a writer oh, strike. That's true. I can't yeah, fucking okay. write anything All more right. than that. Okay. You're yeah. right. Don't say New Jersey. Say New York, New Jersey. Okay. No, say New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. No, I, that's too many words. Say tri-state area. How about East Coast? Oh, yeah. Hit them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Go for America. <laughs> and Europe. <laughs> yes. They can make an easy trip across true, the ocean. Man. Everybody. Okay. Hey, East Coast, we're bringing Hollywood. <laughs> a lot of pressure. I'm not a first take guy. This is why I don't let you talk in my movies. I know. <laughs> all right. Take two. Hey there, East Coast. We're bringing Hollywood Babylon to you in New Jersey. I'm sorry. Hey there? What the fuck? What? Dude? You what? Is this the Mickey Mouse Club? Hey there. Hi there. Hold there. Say, say something fucking... Say curse and do it as a famous person. There you go. That's what they want. Dance, monkey. <laughs> ah, East Coast, how are you? Yes, it's going to be incredible. We're going to be doing Hollywood Babylon for you. Just you in New Jersey. Where, where? At the, at the Smod Castle Cinemas in the Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. Well remembered. Um, what is the, uh, what, uh, what's the date? Uh, the date is June 3rd. It's going to be unbelievable. I'll be there and I'll be digging a hole outside the, the theater and then filling it in again. <laughs> because that's what I do these days. Uh, 
Uh, tickets at csmod.com. Uh, get your tickets at csmod.com. Or smodcastlecinemas.com. Or smodcastlecinemas.com. And don't forget Guardians of the Galaxy 3 p- still playing. And don't forget <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is still playing so you can see oh, the baby rabbit. <laughs> and cut. Give it up for Ralph, okay. everybody. That'd make me want to go see the show. Would it? Yeah. Make me stay far away. <laughs> <laughs> a nice two-minute commercial. In yeah. Right. Uh, Heath Louie. Heath Louie, are yeah. you here? Hi, Heath. How are you? Good, thank you. Heath is also here from Australia. Sydney, Another Australia. One. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, joining me will be my wife, Michelle, who will be celebrating her 40th birthday next week. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Michelle. She's an absolute... Next week, though. Yeah, next week. So you're no zombie Jen. It's close enough. <laughs> She's an absolute gem of a woman who I've been lucky enough to spend the last 16 years with. I love how she continually supports me and puts up with all my nerdy hobbies. Like attending this show, I can only imagine. Yes. <laughs> can I was you hoping... imagine your drag to fucking America and then you're dragged to the show? Oh my God. So you could do anything. We're in Los Angeles. You could have fucking same-sex encounters. He's like, let's go watch a former radio guy and a fucking former director <laughs> talk about his dead dog. That should be the commercial for the Jersey show. That really, <laughs> that really sells it, Kev. Way to make me feel good early in the show. <laughs> I was hoping David Bowie could sing Michelle an early happy birthday. Oh, well, of course we can, Heath. That's what we do here. Josh? Happy birthday to you, Michelle. Mm. Happy birthday to you, Michelle. So sexy. Yeah, all the way from Sydney. Now you're here in Los Angeles celebrating your birthday next week. Now you're going to have a birthday. We wish you happy birthday next week on the actual day. Happy birthday to you, Miss Jet. Don't. <laughs> happy birthday, Michelle. For fuck's sake. It's been a minute since Don't break I did the that. shell. <laughs> uh, who's this from? Samantha she Hannah. The, you in the, the, the shell. shell? Yeah. Samantha Hannah? Hi, Samantha Hannah. Hi. How are you? Uh, Samantha writes Today is my fiance's birthday. What's your fiance's name? Andrew. Andrew. Happy birthday, Andrew. Thank Congratulations. You. Happy birthday, Andrew. <laughs> We've been together eight years on June 5th, which is the anniversary of our first date, which incidentally was also at a Hollywood Babylon show. The fuck? Seriously? Your where? First where date? was it? It was at the Irvine. Or at the, the Improv, the improv, improv in Irvine. Irvine. Yeah. It's been a minute since we've been there. Your show brought us together. We bonded immediately over a mutual love of HBO and Kevin Smith movies. And we were Ralph Report. Remember those? Yes, I, I like those. We were Ralph Report listeners from the beginning, and now our day doesn't feel complete without it. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful to you both for creating a community where I can meet this amazing man who stood by me when both of my grandparents passed and my uncle was diagnosed with cancer in the first six months of our relationship. Jesus, I thought I was bringing the show down with the dead dog material. (laughs) Fuck, lady, come on, it's a comedy show. (laughs) Something funny happened or not? (laughs) Mm. That's really nice. You guys met because of the show? And he turned out to be a good man. And most of the people listening to the show are not good people, so... Ah, come on! How long have you guys been together? Eight. Eight years. Fucking A, man. This man taught me how to drive when I was too traumatized from losing my sister in a car accident to learn how to drive. What the fuck with the life of Job, man? How good is she in bed? That's all I keep thinking. <laughs> Why, does grief make one good? No, but he's like, oh, she's, she's, she's just a nightmare. She's, <laughs> she's cursed. Everyone around her dies, but I just can't give it up. They're, <laughs> <laughs> They're affiance. She's just tragedy on two legs, but I just I can't leave that pussy. That's Truly. what he's thinking. It's like a fucking Shakespeare play. He supported me through college and continues to do everything in his power to make me smile. That's got to be a chore, given your (laughs) fucking life. Jesus. (laughs) Queen doom and gloom over there. (laughs) 
Now I want to do something to make him smile. Oh, are you going to blow him while we watch? <laughs> Come on up. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> That'll turn that frown upside down. Turn it into a circle. <laughs> you know, circle of life. Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. <sighs> I haven't told him I was writing you guys, but I was hoping to surprise him with Kevin marrying us. We got in jail. Uh, I hate to break your heart, but I'm already married. No, so. no, not that. Uh, you're not marrying them. You're using your power. Presiding over them. Yes. Oh, fucking my power from the Universal Life Church, fusing humans together as one. Yes, you're ordained. You can actually marry them in this room tonight. Do you want that? We got engaged. Well, well, would that make you happy? <laughs> We got engaged a couple years ago, and I can think of no better way to move forward than to have the people who started our relationship bring it to the next level. Fucking I, man. To thank you this, I will be moving up to the four-star level on the Ralph Report. Well, we're doing it now, that's for sure. What, and I'll what is sign up difference? for Kevin Smith's Modcast subscription as well. Oh, well, then well. we're yes. definitely fucking doing it. What yeah. is the difference between the three-star and the four-star? How much per month? Uh, you get swag and stuff and access to me and things and, you know, <laughs> phone sex, you know, all the usual things. <laughs> access to me? What, yeah. You come over to the house and shit? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you guys want to watch Quincy? Come over to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy it. Natural causes. <laughs> Um, fucking A, man. Let's marry these two kids. What do you say? Come on up. What are you going to do while I'm doing it? I'll just hold the mic. Okay. I, I Can will... you shoot it as well? Oh, for fuck's sake. What am I? What am I, an octopus? I know it's a lot to ask. It is a lot to ask. Dan, you want to shoot it? Yeah, Dan. Make yourself useful. You're in the fun fucking row every week. Do me a favor. Don't look at my dick pics. All right. He doesn't mean his dick pics, by the way. <laughs> All right, so wait, it's Sam and who? It's uh, Samantha and um, Andrew. 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 Welcome to the stage, Samantha and Andrew, everybody. <laughs> and she made us dolls of, of, our, of each of us. Oh, my God. Look oh, at that. Look at you. Aww. And you're holding a beat. I am holding a beat. You're holding a beat. Oh, thank you so much. How adorable. Fucking hey, man. These look like uh, voodoo dolls, quite frankly. <laughs> They can make out. Mm -hmm. Turn around. <laughs> That's fucking lovely. Thank Why do you. I have a wallet chain? Why do I have a... <laughs> what, do you, what? You think I'm a biker? What the hell? No, because you hate America. Great. <laughs> Kids, jump, uh, jump yes. into the cathedral Come into the right cathedral here. here. Face, face, uh, well, face, Rev face Kev. each other. That'd be probably Rev Kev. Watch the court. You're getting married at a comedy club. This will be something to tell the kids about. <laughs> Open up so Dan can see me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know you're getting married and all, but, but this I, is Kevin's shot. Yeah, what That's the what fuck? That's what he's saying. Uh, okay, uh, kids. Uh, uh, here, I'm a, you put your one hand down, and then you put one hand on top of hers. And it's the I'll fucking hokey pokey? Here. Yes. <laughs> it's very ceremonial. And then okay. you put your hand on top of mine. All right. I put my hand here? No, get the oh, fuck out. Oh. <laughs> you put your other hand, Sam, and then Andrew put your hand there. There you go. All right. Babylon One, on three. Two, three. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's a little fucking sporty. All right. Little, you just yeah, put your hands together like ball right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, how do we begin? Oh, yes. Mowage. <laughs> no, that's not you. No? That was another guy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today ostensibly to do a podcast, but fucking... <laughs> but now something more important is going to happen, kids. You came here to get some fucking gas and some giggles. You're going to watch two human beings get fused together in holy matrimony. <laughs> What, what, what it was once two is going to become one. This is like a fucking island of Dr. Moreau type situation. <laughs> they enter the fucking arena as two and they'll leave the steel cage as fucking one. And that's what marriage is, ladies and gentlemen. A mutation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go further, before I uh, do ceremonial shit, uh, d d d tell us how you... Well, we already heard how you met. Yeah. Tell us how you felt 
Tell us the first time that you told him that you loved him. There you go. <laughs> I, <laughs> the first time I told him I loved him, it was after a party. Um, and he was drunk, and I said, I love you, and he, he didn't say it back. <laughs> Perhaps you want to marry someone else yeah. in the crowd. There's, there's other options. It's not too late. How long after the first time you said I love you did he finally say that he loved you? I think it was only like a month later. We what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> what were you holding out for, man? Head? <laughs> Andrew, uh, well, what do you... Well, keep it in mind, there was a lot of death around things <laughs> yes, at the time. It's true. What do you remember about the first time that you uh, told Samantha you loved her? Um, I was uh, pretty nervous, shaking. I, I don't know if she was going to say it back to me after a month, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I said it, and I, I, it felt right. It felt right that time. <laughs> that time it felt right. <laughs> It's never going to be more right than this time, because this is the most fucking important. Man, did you guys bring rings or no? I, no, I didn't. <laughs> That's okay. Give each other the dolls. <laughs> <laughs> or not the dolls, but take his chain off and wrap <laughs> it around the finger. Take the wallet chain. You don't need rings, man. Rings are a fucking outward symbol, and what we're looking for here is an inward symbol. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> just came up with that. Just that like was that. good. That was good. Don't tell the writers, Gil, but I just wrote I that won't. right now. Scab. <laughs> and scabs is what marriage is all about, kids. Um, I remember getting married. I remember standing across from my wife, and she was like eight months pregnant. And, um, you know, I was like, all right, we better do this. And, uh, and I remember thinking going into it, well, fucking, this is just like dating plus. Like, we've been dating for a while. This would just be like that. But something strange happened when we stood across from one another. We looked in each other's eyes. Look in her fucking eyes. <laughs> we were looking in each other's eyes, and, and I saw something that I've been looking for my whole life, man. The person that I wondered, you know, I saw my parents be married ever since I was a kid. And I was like, one day I'll have that, I hope. But one day I, I hoped I would have. I didn't know I would have and shit. But my whole life, I was wondering, what would that person that I'd spend the rest of my life with look like? And then in that moment, I realized, oh, shit, it's this motherfucker. <laughs> so, uh, so suddenly it went from just something simple of like, you know, oh, this will be dating plus to something real. And I'll never forget uh, the priest. He was a Dutch Catholic monk. And he said to us, Dutch Catholic, he had a lot of pretzels on him. Mm. And, um, <laughs> and he said something. He said, like... Uh, you know, what we're about to do right now is so real that only the, the government can dissolve it. Like, if you want to end this after this, you have to get the state involved. Mm. And I remember thinking, well, that's fucking dire. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how serious it is, man. Two enter and they leave as one, fused together. And, and the Universal Life Church has given me this fucking power for $15. Mm. <laughs> it's worth it, I think. To fuse two mother and father groups together at the genitals and the heart. Mm. <laughs> so uh, in this very holy moment with Ralph as our witness, and look at him cucking it out right there. He just, I, I, I couldn't be happier. Can't, can't fucking wait. Uh, I say to you, uh, Samantha, do you take Andrew to be your lawfully wedded husband? To I, wait, there's a whole oh, story. Get the fucking mic out of her face. Oh, God. Yeah, You're the cause... worst fucking altar boy. I'll tell you that right now. Because it's, it's all about you, Kev. It really is. You got me, Dan? <laughs> Samantha, do you take Andrew to be your lawfully wedded husband? To have and to hold in sickness and in health. For richer and for poorer. And here's the most metal part of the vows. Till death do you part. <laughs> now put the fucking now the... mic in her face. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so hot and when she says death to your part she means it because she knows oh, she has had a shit ton of death that's all I'm saying she's for real Samantha no Don't you listen. already asked her Andrew Andrew yeah. <laughs> Andrew do you take Samantha I have my hand on him though so I was saying, do you take him? So I got to put my hand on her now. Andrew, okay. do you take Samantha? Otherwise, I'm doing this twice. Yeah, you don't want that. And everyone's like, why do you keep touching the guy? Right. 
And then we can't do the show in Florida anymore. All right, all right, fair enough. We gotta go. Uh, Andrew, do you take Samantha here to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold in sickness and in health, for richer and for poorer, no matter how many of her relatives die? <laughs> and here's the most metal part of the vows. Till death do you part. I do. <laughs> Don't applaud yet. It's not over. No. <laughs> hold that, man. Uh, kids... Uh, I know uh, this is, uh, look, I, look, I just want to take a moment to be serious here because we're in a comedy club and shit. Nobody really ever wants to get religious in a comedy club. But if you're going to bind people together, man, we have to invoke holy things. So fucking, if you're one of those people who don't believe in that shit, just fucking put that to the side because for the next few moments, we're going to do something very sacred. Repeat after me these sacred vows. In, in brightest day. <laughs> Brightest, in, brightest, in brightest day. day. In blackest night. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. No, no evil shall, shall escape my sight. sight. Let those who worship evil's might. Let those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Beware, Beware my power. power. Green Lantern's light. Green, Green Lantern's, Lantern's light. By the power invested in me by the Universal Life Church, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Give it up for Samantha and Andrew. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Congratulations, kids. Your new moniker shall be Samandra. Oh, I like that. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, that was fucking that cool. That was fun. We should have negotiated to watch their fuck. I know. <laughs> Honeymoon fuck, right? Where are you guys going after the show? Parking lot? <laughs> what the fuck happened to my phone? Oh. <laughs> Give it up for Dan. He shot the picture. Thank you, Dan. I so, so hope it's just eight minutes of Dan's face. <laughs> no, look at that shot. Oh, man. that's nice. It's yeah, well composed. All right, we can Dan. watch the whole... Let's relive it. No, let's not. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Sh we, we're out of time. The show's over now. Yeah. I know, but it was worth it because we got dolls. <laughs> We also get emails from all around the world. Josh? Ain't no drag. Garmin's got an email back. Featuring Kevin's reactions. That's right. This email comes from... Let's hear for Dr. Josh Roush, by the way, on the, on the sights and sounds this evening. The third member of this show. Did I read online you're giving out Wrong Reasons t-shirts tonight, Josh? Got two left, a small and a large. Wow. I think large. All right, done. All right, done. spoken Jesus. for. Well, that was fucking fast. I was going to say, let's make a game of it, but fuck. Yeah, right. People love free shit. Both? We got two people just got married. Probably should have given them the shirts and shit. Yeah. They just got married. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. their gift to each other. I want my free fucking t-shirt. Spoken like a single person right there. <laughs> they just got married. Fuck them. <laughs> Their happiness. I want a t-shirt. When does Wrong Reasons come out, sir? Plug, plug. Uh, August 15th on streaming and Blu-ray. Yeah. yeah. Featuring commentary by Kevin Smith. Oh. No one asked me to do any fucking commentary. <laughs> Just saying. You're in the movie. I know. That's why I thought maybe somebody, you know, in the Because your commentary would be like, I'm in it. <laughs> and I got words to say. Look, this ain't no Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> and then you'd probably fucking do a William Shatner impression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, little Ralph. And Big Ralph. <laughs> You're nicer stoned. <laughs> so true. This is from Bo in Texas. He said, uh, listening to you guys since I was 24, and this is my first email into the show. 
doesn't say how old he is now. Yeah, know. really. Oh, oh it, it does. does. It does, yeah. The May 20th show happens to coincide with my 32nd birthday. I'm not able to be there to celebrate with you guys as I would like to, but I was wondering if Ralph could do me a favor and do just a little part of Quint's speech from Jaws as my favorite impression, Ed Wynn. Thank you so much for what you do, Bo Torres. Sure, Bo. Happy birthday. Just lots a, of fucking video on this show. Just tonight. a little chunk. A little chunk of that speech as Ed Wynn. Work Wynne. the camera, bitch. Work uh, the camera. All right. All right. <laughs> Sometimes the shark looks right at you. <laughs> right into your eyes. And the thing about a shark is it's got lifeless eyes, don't you know? Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. But when he comes at you, he doesn't even seem to be living till he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white and then all you hear is that terrible high-pitched screaming. The ocean turns red, and despite all your pounding and hollering, those sharks come in, and they rip you to pieces, don't you know? There you go. That's all he's getting for his birthday. That movie would have been so much more watchable. I That's think what Quint so sounded too. like. Yes. So anyway, we delivered the bomb. <laughs> nice poem. Fun. Very good. Uh, folks send us emails all the time with different stuff. Uh, one of my favorites is when they're in their travels, they run across a town with a fucked up name. And we, again, we never bothered to really name this segment, so we just call it Your Town's Got a Fucked Up Name. Kyle Fouts in San Dimas. San Dimas football rules. Oh, oh nice pull. Uh, pulled this one in when he was traveling in Pennsylvania, my home state. He came across this little town. Shartlesville. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. It's right next to Squirtsburg, I think. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. We also love to run across things, uh, or, or the, uh, the uh, Hollywood Babylon listeners do. They run across things that are meant for children, things that are supposed to be enjoyed by children. And when you look at them, you realize these are inappropriate toys. Not appropriate for girls, not appropriate for boys. What the fuck is that? Inappropriate toys. First one comes from Samantha Lusted. She says, we all need some Jesus in our lives, right? I found this for kids at a local charity shop here in the UK. This is something for the kids, I think. Inflatable Jesus. Go. <laughs> Inflate him. Play with him. Pray with him. He's always there for you. Unless someone's got a pin. Here's your chance to blow the Lord. <laughs> My favorite part of the box, he floats on water. <laughs> well, if you Truth listen to the story, right there. Yeah. Uh, this one's from AJ Fuerman. AJ, are you here tonight? Yeah. Hi, AJ. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, no one, uh, it's a, this is a staple of kids in terms of play sets. The old doctor set. Yeah. This is a great one. Can we see, take a look at this doctor set? Yeah. Can we, can we zoom in on the doctor set a little bit, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why the shotgun. <laughs> Your prognosis is not good. <laughs> Unless you're a doctor in Texas, I don't understand why you have the gun in your doctor's kit. <laughs> but what do I know? Kyle Matthews sent these in. He said, you know how hard it is to uh, potty train kids. Do you remember that? It's been that? a few years. It's been a few. It, it, trust me, it's hard. A lot of kids, uh, they balk at the idea initially. Well, not anymore. Not when you introduce them to some of their favorite friends. Here's the first one. Oh, fuck. Right? Oh my God, I would totally shit in that. You couldn't stop the kids from shitting on Spidey's lap. Yeah, look at that, man. What if your kid has to go real fast? What if he's in a, what if Spider he's, he's in a hurry? Oh, shit. Yeah. What if you've taken the family out for a dinner at Taco Bell? Well, then... <laughs> you need a sturdier toilet. That's an intimidating toilet right yes, there. Yes, it is. That's how I feel usually after talking like, about it. Like, uh, we've lost some people this week in the entertainment business who gave All us... All of Samantha's relatives. Yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> that's what you get for sharing, Samantha. <laughs> Opening up. That's right. Uh, given us bodies of work we'll enjoy for many years to come. Sadly, they were taken too soon. They are the Tinseltown Stiffs. And now, another edition of... Tinseltown Stiffs! They will be missed. I'm not a big uh, wrestling guy, 
but even I knew this name. Superstar Billy Graham has passed away at the age of 79. Oh. Here's a, a shot of him in his prime. Wow. With his belt. He was an icon, a bodybuilder, of course, and famous wrestler, but more importantly, a big-time mentor for some of the biggest names in the game. Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Jesse Ventura, all, he took them all under his wing and sort of learned, taught them how to be as bombastic and as large as he, he was. He was an 80s guy, right? Um, I think 70s and 80s, yeah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. We also lost Jim Brown, great NFL star, but also star of motion pictures as well, famously the Dirty Dozen. Running Man, Any Given Sunday, Tim Burton's Mars Attacks, you may remember. He's yeah. the, uh, the heavyweight champ who's working at the casino there. Spike Lee's He's Got Game. Um, in The Running Man, he was one of the villains in uh, that Schwarzenegger film. Here he is in his prime in the 1960s. Legend. And lastly, Andy Rourke, bassist for the Smiths, passed away this week at the age of oh, 59. Shit. How old? 59 years old. It's not that old, man. Now, a battle with pancreatic cancer took him way too oh, soon. Um, he joined the Smiths in 1982 and played alongside the band until their split in 1987. One of the great bassists in rock history. Here's a little bit of the work of the Smiths. Good poll. Even after the split with if the band. If Jason Mewes heard that, he'd be like, fucking charmed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I was in Charmed. Yes, you're right, sir, I was. Thank you for remembering. Because <laughs> nobody else How does. dare you, sir? I did two episodes of Charmed. Did you really? Yes. What did you play? I was the DJ at the P3 which was the club that the three sisters opened up on the show. How'd that happen? Um, I, uh, Who'd you blow to get that? I out? didn't blow anybody. <laughs> I got a call. <laughs> how, how dare you? <laughs> I got a call from one of the producers who was a listener of the, the morning show here in Los Angeles. Did that happen a lot? And like he said, we need, a, we need a DJ, and we like your voice, and we thought you'd do it, so come on down. So I introduced Dishwalla. In one season when they came out, and the Cranberries in another season. The fuck? Those are two like actual bands. At the time, they were white hot. Did you have a character name? Uh, yes. P3 DJ, I think was his name. <laughs> so were they all on set? Did you see all the Prue? I and met fucking... all the girls. Did you really? Yes. And uh, most of them were very nice. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> Spill a little Hollywood tea. No. Um... Shannon was always a doll to yeah, me. she's amazing. And then we worked together years later again on that uh, sitcom. Yeah, that we put did, together. yeah, Stubbs. Yes. And she was sweet. The and, Fox shortcoms. And, um, um, yeah, that's all. That's all I need to say. <laughs> they, they were stressed. The girls were stressed. They had a lot on their plate, so I don't take anything personal. Were they doing spells and shit? <laughs> yes. Were you? Yes. They, ca they cast a spell on me, and my balls got huge. And that's why <laughs> I'm still carrying a grudge. That would, did that happen a lot? Like people listen to you on the radio and be like, come be in a I got a lot of gigs that way, yeah. For some reason, they were like, oh, you claim to be an actor. Why don't you come down here and do a little something on our show? You showed them that you were. I sometimes, yes. <laughs> what else did you get to be on? I, got, I started working on Family Guy because I was on the radio. Seriously? The casting director for Family Guy heard me doing some impressions. They're like, oh, we got a bit. We're doing Dustin Hoffman uh, in this week's episode. Can you come down and do it? And I was like, yeah. So I went down and I met Seth and I did the thing and he thought it was funny and then he started bringing me back and now I've been on over 200 episodes of Family Guy. Okay, hey, man. Were you ever like, um, I do a me and Adam West to like, we got the real guy. They got the real guy, yeah. <laughs> but Adam and I used to hang out in the green room while we were waiting to record on that show because he'd come in to do Mayor West and I'd come in to do a bunch of voices and so we would always, like once a week, we would shoot the shit in the green room and just hang out together. Have an Adam West off and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Where he was. That's not what I sound like, Ralph. <laughs> I used to say that all the time. <laughs> it should be pointed out, I know we've talked about it a zillion times, but you got the man a star in the Walk of Fame. I, I played a role in it, yeah, for sure. Pretty big yeah. role, yeah. yeah. And in, uh, in return, he asked me to speak uh, on the day when they, put, when they gave him the ceremony. It was just, he asked me and Seth MacFarlane to, to speak on his behalf. It was like, a special day. I miss him. He's a good guy. Yeah, good dude. Avast, G mateys. It's me, Kevin Smith. Jason Mewes. Have you ever wanted to get lost on the high seas with Jay and Silent Bob? Well, now you're going to have your chance. 
Go to Jay and Silent Bob Cruiseaskew.com right now and sign up for Jay and Silent Bob's Cruise Askew. We're going to hit the high seas. Where are we going, Gilligan? We're going to be going to Miami, to Nassau, Bahamas, and the Norwegian Pearl. Doesn't yeah. that sound great? It's going to be me and him. It's going to be all of our friends. We're doing live podcasts. There's going to be a movies on board. There's going to be a View Askew Museum. Great times to be had by all, ladies and gentlemen. Tickets available right now. Go buy them, man. And if you sign up, before June 23rd, it's only $100 down per cabin. Mm. What are you waiting for, man? Get lost at sea with Jay and Silent Bob. Let's do it. Um, there are things that happen in television shows and movies that uh, you're not supposed to see, but we see them anyway. So we call those shit that should not be. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. This one comes from Carter in Chicago. Carter picked one of my favorite films, although quite... What the hell? Damn it. Keep me safe. Is that Uh, how you play with a doll? You're like... (laughs) Give it a little life, man. Like, fucking... That's how, that's how people move in real yeah, life. Yeah, it's very lifelike. <laughs> Got polio. <laughs> He's on his knees. He's on right? his knees. Yeah. Yeah. It's Hollywood, please, baby. Please. <laughs> Uh, Carter sent this in from one of my favorite worst films of all time, Samurai Cop. Has anyone seen Samurai Cop? It's a a special, awful film. I was in the sequel, Samurai Cop 2, if you ever find it. Uh, You were in the sequel? I paid to be in the sequel. It's the only time I paid someone else so I could act in something. Like an auction or something? It was. They were doing a uh, GoFundMe to raise money to do the film. (laughs) And if you paid a certain amount of money, they'd put you in a cameo in the film. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to be in this... What promises to be the second worst film of all time? I had no idea. If like the next time I'm putting you in a movie, I'm gonna be like, pay up. <laughs> I have to be one. I want to want to be in the movie though. It's the only thing. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Don't be sad. <laughs> 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 He's very, very limber. Carter sent in this scene. There's so many awful scenes in this film, but this one's particularly funny. He says, these bullet wounds, apparently you only bleed after they cut away from the guy who gets shot. If you notice, every time this guy gets shot, he grabs his chest, there's no blood, and they cut away when they come back. That's when you see the blood. Uh, it, was a, it, was a cheap, uh, it was a cheap shoot. Magical. And also, sometimes we highlight performances that are so bad that exquisite acting goes all... No, bad acting goes all the way around to become exquisite acting. To be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. Uh, this film comes from Robert Benner in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, my hometown. Um, this scene is from a movie called Second Glance, which is a uh, religious drama from 1992 about a young Christian boy in a public high school who feels that his religion is restricting him from having a good time in school. So he wishes that Jesus had not saved him. And much like It's a Wonderful Life, he gets Jesus taken away from his life and he has to live with the repercussions. Are you fucking serious? This is a real thing. <laughs> and it, by the end, I'm sure he realizes oh. that it's a good thing Jesus saved yes. him. Yes, without Jesus, there are no answers. The Bible has all the answers. And then he inflates a Jesus. And <laughs> it's inflatable Jesus, yes. And uh, here's the ending of the film where he realizes that his best friend, who's also uh, his best friend in Jesus, 
is alive, although in the, there was a, in that moment where he was not saved, his, his friend died. And so he's so happy to see him. And it's the greatest, perhaps last line ever in the history of a film. This is from Robert sent this in from Philadelphia. Here's the ending scene of Second Glance. He's framed on it. <laughs> Jesus, man. It's all about delivery, right? It's oh, actors, yeah. Actors make it's a choice. It could have been like, Jesus, man. <laughs> right, it's no. He's like, Jesus, man. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> I am going to leave every room for the rest of my life. <laughs> yes. That's your sign off? On that note, Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see that one more time, Josh? <laughs> Can you replay that for me? <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Jesus, man. Jesus, man. <laughs> now it's time to take a look at all the entertainment news in a segment we call the HBO Headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines. And give me head. <laughs> There's a strike going on. I don't know if you know this or not in show business. The fuck you said. Yeah, WGA writers have gone on strike. Jesus, man. <laughs> Jesus, man. I saw you out there on the picket line. I did. I joined uh, Mark. Mark Bernard, and, uh, uh, our buddy, has been, uh, you know, uh, going out since the strike began. And uh, I was like, I want to go. And so he taught me how to strike. This is my first strike ever mm. first time I ever walked a picket line and I gotta tell you it's fucking fun <laughs> I mean I know it's a bad making the best of a worse situation yeah, yeah it was cool I ran into like fucking writers that like not every writer is like visually famous right Right. like you can know somebody's work you and know the know name what they maybe. look like and then another name and so uh, Drew Goddard who did the first season of Net of Netflix's Daredevil yeah right Brian K. Vaughn Why the Last Man at one point, Mark was talking to these two dudes and shit, and then, uh, you know, I, he said their name. He said, this is a Drew and Brian, but he didn't go any further than that. So I was letting them chit-chat and insinuate myself in the conversation. I, I, I guess I was looking a little aloof and shit. And then they went in one direction, we went in another, and I asked Mark, I was like, who are those guys? And he was like, oh, it's Drew Goddard and Brian K. Vaughn. I was like, why didn't you fucking tell me, man? <laughs> like, I know those fucking dudes. So thankfully... We saw them again, and I got to be like, I, I, he only told me later who the fuck you guys are. And Brian K. Vaughn was like, I thought you hated me. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it was kind of cool. I met, met a lot of like fellow writers, baby writers, people who had like nice things to say. But like, I'm in this job because I saw no, Clerks, awesome. and I realized if that's a movie, I could fucking write. <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that. A lot of people going like, I saw your video. Are you okay, man? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it was, it was good times out there, man. They give you a blank sign. You can write whatever the fuck you want. You want. I wrote, without writers, Hollywood is silent, Bob. Ah. A little self-serving. A little self-serving, but you know. Uh, sadly, the strike means a lot of other people are out of work because some of these shows have shut down, like the late night shows. Jimmy yeah. Fallon and uh, Colbert and uh, um, Seth, Seth Myers. Myers as well. And it was uh, sad news this week when we found out that the uh, non-writing staff members of the Jimmy Fallon show have been put on what they're calling unpaid leave of absence until the strike is over, meaning nobody's getting paid on those shows. Oh, right. Uh, Seth Myers and Stephen Colbert is continuing to pay their staff even during the strike unit. But, uh, class. Very just classy. Nice. But the Jimmy Fallon show with its night show not paying their, uh, their staff members. They Which told I, me that when I was on the strike line, they told me that... Um, if, you know, right now it's just the Writers Guild, but I guess SAG is taking a strike vote or authorizing them to strike or they whatever. They did, yeah. And, uh, but I was also told if the DGA joined the strike, the strike would end just like that. They said the last time the DGA struck, the fucking Hollywood was like, all right, all right, after like two fucking days or some such shit. <laughs> Yeah, because um, a lot of scripts are already done. You can still make product, but you can't do it without a director. Isn't that crazy? I had no idea. Good thing I'm a hyphen it. That's um, right. <laughs> but it's it's nuts, man, how little they give a fuck about the writer. We're like, keep fucking striking. Like, ABC announced their fucking schedule for the fall already. Yeah. And it's a gazillion fucking it's all know, reality, reality shows. shows and shit. And then reruns of, of uh, what was it called? The Abbott. Abbott and Costello? Know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing them out of mothballs and shit. That's not what I'm asking you. Who's the guy on first? <laughs> oh, my God. That, that would make that. me end the strike right there. 
But if the DGA were to join the strike, and even SAG, SAG's got like fucking 180,000 members and shit. Yeah. But you can make a thing without writers. Um, you can make a thing without actors because you could do reality. Right. But you can't make shit without a director, son. <laughs> Word. <laughs> well, talk to your boys and, and, and strike. Oh, my balls? Your boys. Oh. Your director boys. You're yeah, the directors. True. true. Get I, Tarantino on the line. Say, what's up? I don't, I don't do I have any director friends I guess I do Affleck, Affleck yeah good point he's yeah. a director sometimes sometimes <laughs> he's a good director did you see Air I've not seen Air yet no did he I, direct that too he did yeah. and I've, I have went to the premiere like months ago and shit but it's on Amazon Prime right now I watched it twice in one week it's a fucking totally good movie like I, honestly I think it's his best and you know he did Argo yeah shit. he did but uh, it's a good flick uh, Sports Illustrated has announced they're going to have the oldest model in history on the cover of their swimsuit edition. Jesus, man. That model is 81-year-old Martha Stewart. I don't oh, know if shit. you've seen the cover or not. But... She's 81? She's 81. She looks great. I would wreck that. <laughs> Same. I, would, I would destroy her. You'd show her how to live. turn her bones to powder. <laughs> she's done time yeah she knows a trick or two I bet yeah, yeah. truly maybe turn your bones to powder you're one bone bend me over <laughs> give me that she'd be like your turn give me, give, me, give me that osteoporosis fuck this is Martha Stewart oh is it okay we should have dolls of ourselves at every show it reminds me too much of therapy <laughs> where did Kevin touch you Ralph where did he hurt you? <laughs> right here in the heart. Right in the heart. Uh, Indiana Jones 5 premiered at the Cannes Film Festival this week. Sure How about did. that? And it, uh, I don't know if it was a good idea, man. Uh, there have has you been seen the reviews. There has been a middling response, as they say. Right now, it's like under 50%, I think, on Rotten Tomatoes, if you give a shit about that sort of thing. But it felt like, you know, they were like, let's go to Cannes. Woo! And now they're like, why did we go to Cannes? Yeah. <laughs> Now, admittedly, there was like a six-minute standing ovation after the film was over, but they kind of six. Do that. Yeah, I believe it was Clerks six. Two got eight, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just saying. Uh, but yeah, the fucking Indiana Jones' biggest villain right now are fucking critics. Harrison Ford, who's also turning eighty-one in a couple months. It's a good week for eighty-one-year-olds, apparently. Truly, put him on the fucking. He was. Cover. <laughs> He was in tears during the standing ovation. We have a picture of him actually feeling something, which is a, <laughs> it's a rare, rare moment for what Harrison is, I, wonder, I wonder what that would sound like. Uh, you know, there's some people standing up. When they go, they go. how he felt no bullshit man i think that is my favorite impression you do <laughs> it's legit hysterical that you fucking he and it sounds like him as well i saw him on uh they did a, he was on good morning america for, live from fucking can and they were like what are you gonna miss about playing indiana jones and he was like nothing <laughs> not at 81 i bet <laughs> yeah. he's like i've done it it's over nothing um Reboots, remakes, reimaginings of shows hitting the airwaves again. We often say, no thanks, we already got one. No thanks, we've already got one. We don't need another one. It's already been done. This week, TBS Cable Channel has announced a reimagining of a show called The Joe Schmo Show, which was... Don't boo, that means Ralph gets work. Yeah, not so much. What happened? I thought you were the host. Uh, for three seasons of that show, I was the uh, host and yeah. one of the characters. And uh, it's, a, it's a brand new crew, and they're going in what they say, a different direction. Ralphless? Ralphless. Kat Dealey will be the new host. She was the host of uh, So You Think You Can Dance? I think is the name of the show she was on. Um oh. Uh, I think she hosts another show called uh, called So You Think You Can Host? No, no. I, I'm kidding. She's 
What, uh, what was this? How, how, what the... Like, about a year ago, I got a call from my agents and they said, oh, interesting news, they're bringing back the Joe Schmo show and the yeah. producers want to talk to you. And I was like, all right, I'll have that conversation. Cha-ching. Cha-ching, right? Yeah. I'm back where I belong. Fuck yeah. I'm Front and center on television. Yeah, just like it's charmed all over. That's right. <laughs> And so they call me up. They say, oh, yeah, we're going to do the show again, but you're, we don't need you to host so much. We'd like you to do like a cameo, though, to sort of tie in the previous version to this new reimagined version. And I said, what, how are you reimagining it? And they said, well, we're getting one guy who doesn't know what's going on, and we're going to surround him with a bunch of <laughs> actors playing roles, and he doesn't know until the very end that the whole thing's about him. And I said, wow, that really is reimagining the whole concept. <laughs> you guys are brilliant. Um, they said, we want to do like a cameo thing with you. And I was like... Uh, and they explained the idea. And I was like, oh, you know what? For the fans of the original show, it might be fun for them to see me in it. So talk to my people and see what the deal's going to be like, and we'll see. So weeks go by, and we don't hear anything. And I get a call one day from a guy who says, hi, we need to get your COVID test because you're working tomorrow on the Joe Schmo show. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't have a deal in place or anything. And no one got back to us with this idea of me doing a cameo. And he's like, well, you're on the call sheet, so... We got to do it. You gotta, congratulations. You got a job. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> this is, is this your first week in show business, kid? I fe- he's, he sounded like he's 12. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't. I don't have a contract. I don't know what the money's like. I don't know what the role is. I don't know anything. And he's like, oh, wow. That's, that's, oh, that's a problem. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, Jesus, man. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> So I said, talk to your guys and then have them call my guys. And I called my management. I was like, did anyone, did you hear from the Joe Schmo? They're like, no, why? I said, they just called me, said, I'm working tomorrow. I said, we'll get to the bottom of this. So they called them. And then the guy, the guy who reps me is a sweetheart of a man. He called me up and said, yeah, I hate to be this guy, but here's what they're offering to pay you to be on the show. And I was like, wow, that's insulting. Really? Yeah. And I said, tell them good luck, good riddance. So... Joe Schmo Show, coming back. I'm sure it'll be awful. I mean, lovely, <laughs> wonderful, whatever it's going to be. And from time to time, we check in with uh, Justin Bieber as well. Yeah. Justin Bieber. Nobody fucking needs ya. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Because you're a little cunt. Right. She goes, oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, they love that cunt part, man. <laughs> Haley Bieber says she's scared to have kids with Justin Bieber. I don't blame her. I don't blame her either, man. <laughs> Means fucking Justin Bieber, first of all. That's the first problem. Um, she says, I literally cry about this all the time. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Fuck. I want kids so bad, but I get scared. It's enough that people say things about my husband, but I can't imagine having to confront people saying things about my child. Uh, so she's concerned about the public reaction to her procreating with I thought Justin it was, It's like, it's gonna hurt. I'm sure that's part of it. Yeah, I've, I've seen a child be born. It's fucking, it ain't pretty. She said, Shit since just... being married to Justin, I've had some of the saddest, hardest moments of my life. Can you imagine all <laughs> the, the tracks? <laughs> All those times on yachts and just jetting around and just living in palatial homes and stuff, it sounds awful. Yeah, but then you got to look over and see who you're married to and you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Jesus, man. Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> we got some geek news for you as well. Uh, Ruff and Kevin, Ruff and Kevin, Ruff and Kev. Geek news. <laughs> Um, Flash it. Michael Keaton returning as Batman in the new Flash yes! movie. Yes! It's giving me fucking life. Has sparked new interest in the original films Batman and Batman Returns, of course, that he starred in. So much so that Lego is introducing the new Batman Returns Lego Batcave set. Have you seen oh, this shit. thing? Yeah, I have. Just Jason, throw up a picture real Jason quick and take Hughes, a look. That, he's a big Lego kid. So he was 4,000 different pieces to, to create this Batman Returns Batcave set. Wow. Oh, look at the vault. The vault where, you know, with the, with the costumes. Handles. Yeah, with yeah. the costumes. And the Batmobile and everything. Uh, it is coming out on June 5th. It can be yours for the low, low price of $450. <laughs> something every kid can afford. Absolutely. 
Um, think about it, man. We're gonna like. There've only been two Michael Keaton Batman movies. So I know. We've seen all of the adventures of Michael Keaton as Batman. Now we're about to see a fucking third. It's almost like getting a third Batman movie yeah. with Michael Keaton. I think that's why everyone's excited about oh, this. Film. It's crazy. So many years later and shit like that. He looks great too in the suit and everything. And that fucking trailer is like, let's get nuts. I was like. Ah. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to repeat like every line he ever said. <laughs> so happy, all 69 with a man. Yeah. I hope he repeats every fucking line. So, Flash, you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> just like every line, one after another is just... There, do you, I hope he... Refer- I, 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 you know, <laughs> I, I'm just so excited. I hope he references everything. I hope he talks about, like, well, one time I fought the Joker. <laughs> And one time I fought Max Shrek. <laughs> and then that's it. That's just that. <laughs> they should bring Max Shrek back for this one. If it's a multiverse, right? Yeah. Have him come back. So! Yeah. I was wondering where you're going with this. Flash! You're very fast. You go zoom. <laughs> you're there one minute, gone the next. I'd pay to see that. Now do your Michelle Pfeiffer. Meow. <laughs> It's fucking adorable. Thank you. It's right up there with your Harrison Ford. Thank you. And uh, Disney has announced they're permanently shuttering its expensive interactive Star Wars, Star Wars Hotel, the Galactic Star Cruise. Already? Yeah. They only, only opened it last year. It's a year old. And they said, yeah, this may have not been the best idea. <laughs> so we, they're closing it? Shutting it down. The last voyage will be September 28th. <laughs> voyage. So if, if you want to ride on the Galactic Star Cruiser, your last chance is to get in before September 28th. I mean, that was a fall. major investment. Uh, they're saying, well, depending on who you ask, if $90 million to build oh. that thing. The immersive experience, you go on this hotel... And it's supposed to be like you're traveling through space on a star cruiser. No Every, windows, only TV screens, screens that look like space. And everyone, the entire staff, are performers, and they make you believe that you're immersed in the world of Star Wars. Wow. Um, it was the low, low price, I think, that uh, kept people away, the $1,200 per person per day. And that they lowered it. Originally, it was like 6000 for three days. Yes. That was the first price. I think that might have been a problem with the uh, with the... The excursion like, the, the appealing to the one percent of the one percent i think also the problem is when you checked into your hotel this was a typical room so for for twelve hundred dollars i don't want to be staying in a uh, swedish youth hostel <laughs> i would like a little luxury i think on the galactic star cruiser truly man truly. looks like i'm gonna be sleeping under a crack dealer or something from norway what do they do with all that space man i don't know Any ideas? Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> the View Universe. Yo, you have your yeah. own theme park. Let me tell you, if Star Wars can't make it work, I don't think Jay and Silent Bob can make it work either. But we'd be true. a lot fucking cheaper than 6000 bucks. That's true. <laughs> 60 bucks a night. At your house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're almost done here, kids. But before we say goodnight... Oh, really? Yeah. It's, uh, it's oh, wow. A, fucking A, yeah. man. Time flies when you're having a good time. Before we say goodnight, we're going to marry these two kids one more time. Yeah! We... No, no. No, before we say goodnight, we have the last bit of business. We always like to uh, listen to you guys talk about the size of Liam Neeson's cock. One of our favorite... Oh, can't help but wonder How big is Liam? Wie groß is your Liam Neeson's penis? Indeed. If you'd like to contribute your own facts about Liam Neeson's cock, you can always write us at hbopodcast at aol.com. You can send us anything for any of the segments at that email address. Yes, I still use AOL. <laughs> <laughs> these folks sent in these facts about Liam's cock this week. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. It's so big, it's going to replace Tucker Carlson on Fox News. <laughs> I didn't know it was that big of a dick, but... <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big... How big is it? He actually delivers the Brazilian soccer team to their games. We've got some video of that happening. Here's him dropping them off at the game. <laughs> Claudio Tafarel. He just closes up there at the end. 
pretty tight fucking action there, man. <laughs> How relieving it must be after they're all out, right? You know? <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's co-starring with Emma Stone in her new film. We've got a shot from the set. His cock's playing a, a picture window, I believe, in the set. <laughs> Right behind Emma. It's pointing down. He's it's, not ready. He's yet. not ready at all. Five minutes, Mr. Cock. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It made an appearance at King Charles' coronation. I don't know if you saw that or not. No. Here it is outside the grand hall. <laughs> Someone actually mowed that into the lawn outside the coronation. Are you shitting me? No, it absolutely happened, yeah, which I love. Can you Those cheeky Brits. You're going to be king and you look out and you're like, they don't like me. Do no. <laughs> and lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? The WGA is using it to block the entrances of all the major studios. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Burbank, have you had a good time this evening? Thank you so much for spending some time with us. We truly appreciate it. There would be no show, my friends, were it not for the fucking comedic talents of the man to my left. Give it up for the great Ralph Garman, everybody. Let's hear it for my bestest buddy and Babel brother, Mr. Kevin Smith. And that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babel the fuck off. Good night, Burbank! Give it up for Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Silent Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Cheers, you! <laughs>